call to order tonight's Albany Common Council meeting, March the 19th. Can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anani. Present. Ms. Claris. Here. Mr. Ballard. Here. Mr. Conti. Here. Ms. O'Shea. Here. Ms. Fahey. Here. Ms. Farrell. Here. Mr. Flynn. Here. Mr. Hoey. Here. Mr. Igo. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Kimbrough. Here. Ms. Love. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Here. Mr. Robinson. Here. 15 present. Thank you. Um, can everyone stand with me and say the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence after that? Thank you. Now we move to our public comment period. At this time, every individual that's called, that is signed up, will have five minutes to speak upon any subject they would like to speak to. In that time period, uh, council members just listen. Um, they cannot answer any questions or take any questions from the public. So can a clerk please call the first speaker? Ms. Nancy Benedict. My name is Nancy Benedict. I live at 31 Forest Road in Del Mar. Now, last year, you had a bill that was in committee, and I believe it was never reported out of committee. I believe the number was 1.11.15. This was a bill which would have required marking of, fire, of uh, fire hydrants so people could not park in front of fire hydrants. Uh, I think that this should be reintroduced in this legislative session, uh, and in addition to requiring marking of fire hydrants, I believe you also should uh, mark bus stops because it's important that cars not park in bus stops. It should be illegal. I am told that the police will not write tickets for uh, cars that are parked in bus stops unless there are signs marking the bus stops and there's very few s bus stops that are marked in the city of Albany. Having cars parked in bus stops uh, is, it makes it so the buses cannot stop up, up at the curb, which means that senior citizens and other people with mobility disabilities have to walk step down into the street and walk to the bus and it's har harder for them to step into the bus because they're down lower. And it's also bad in the winter especially because uh, in the winter there, if there's snow, if there's snow in the bus stop and there's cars parked there, they can't plow the bus stop and the bus stop becomes unsafe for the bus riders basically. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is that our, our group, uh, Citizens for Public Transportation, uh, started a campaign back in November to try and get better, safer bus stops and other ways other than cars parking there. But the thing of it is we want to get the, our message out to the general public about this campaign we have to get safe, safe accessible, clean bus stops, and we cannot do it on, our, on the Channel Albany TV channel where we used to have a program every week we, which we used to do to get our message across to the general public. But the uh, public access channel, Channel Albany, has been closed for 292 days because they didn't have a coordinator. They, the last day it was open, we did a program, and that was on May 31st, and we haven't had the use of the channel for the general public since then, and I think this is a disgrace to have it closed for 
292 days, and it'll be 300 days on March 27th. Uh, it, it's just a disgrace that you have the TV studio closed for that much time. Uh, there's absolutely no excuse for it. And now there's a, another problem. They thought they had a new coordinator appointed, but he wants more money, and it looks like they're going to have to uh, issue another request uh, for people to apply for the job, and goodness knows when it's going to be open, and I think it's a disgrace. Thank you. Thank you. And clerk, please call the next speaker. Ms. Margaret Diggs. Good evening to each and every one of you. Uh, my name is Margaret Diggs. I live at 172nd Street here in the city of Albany. Uh, I'm not here tonight to talk about taxes or snow or guns. I'm here tonight to talk about um, a traffic safety, a public safety issue for the students who attend the Edmund O'Neill Middle School of Excellence. Um, I am a member of the Arbor Hill Neighborhood Association. I'm also a Democratic committee person, and the intersection that I'm going to talk to you about actually is in my election district. Um, I know that members of the Arbor Hill Neighborhood Association have come and spoken with you before regarding this concern. Um, before I came to the meeting tonight, I walked over to the school to take a look at the cornerstone because I was interested in when the building was first erected, and that was 2001. Since that time, there have been absolutely no indication from the city of Albany that there was a concern about the safety of the foot traffic coming and going to school five days a week. We are now well into the school year. As a member of the Neighborhood Association, we have talked with the police department, we have talked with the school district about working uh, collaboratively to take a look at what can be done to improve the safety at that particular intersection. I don't know if all of you are familiar with the intersection that I'm talking about, but it is Lark and Second Street. And any time of day, there is a considerable amount of traffic because it's a main thoroughfare from one side of town to the other. Um, in the morning, the kids have to compete with all the commuter traffic coming into the city. In the afternoon, they have to compete with utility trucks, school buses, motorists, and other kinds of hazards. And one of the reasons that I'm talking with you about this tonight is because I really don't want to see us wait until something happens. I mean, something really bad happens, like a kid gets clipped or a kid gets killed at that intersection. That's usually when a response gets triggered. I'm really asking for our city um, administrators to be proactive with this matter. Um, as I say, for 17 years, we've seen very little level of address to this concern. Um, we either need some sort of traffic slowing devices, we need a uh, five-day presence of Albany Police Department, uh, uh, force, we need a traffic light, um, but we, or we need some crossing guards. I mean, I think there are some alternatives that could be exercised to promote increased safety for the kids coming and going to that school. One of the other reasons that we're here is because we also understand that the enrollment at the school is going to be increasing over time. So there will be even more children. The risk will be even more increased as the enrollment um, increases. Um, I really tried to speak off the top of my head, but I wanted to um, just say that um, 
if there, we understand that the city engineering department um, has you have one minute left, Mr. indicated that um, there will be a traffic safety study done. One of the things that I would like to see happen, and I think the members of the Neighborhood Association would like to see happen, so we need to close the loop on that. It's not just doing a study for study's sake and getting filed somewhere. I think we'd like to see some transparency there and ask for that traffic study to be shared with the Neighborhood Association so that we can have a better understanding of why we have kind of hit an impasse with the request to improve safety for the kids in the city. Thank you. Thank you. And clerk, please call the next speaker. Alana Klein. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. One night recently, as I was coming home from work, I noticed a displaced person sitting at the bus stop, at a bus stop wrapped in a couple of blankets, obviously freezing cold. I told them that a few weeks prior, I had a short layover between my two jobs and spent a few hours in the mall in the middle of the night because whether temporary or permanent, the mall itself was open, even if none of the stores were. This person told me that they had tried staying in the mall during the night, but a security guard had kicked them out. I do not know if this was the mall's policy, if it was just one indiv individual person, or if I just got lucky that one night. The temperature that night was three degrees. I repeat, three degrees, 29 below freezing. The temperature right now outside is about 10, 15 degrees. If anyone doesn't feel empathy for the situation, I suggest you go out to the bus stop and sit there. You're not allowed to get on a bus or go home or camp, camp out at a store or use your cell phone to, to occupy your mind. Tell me how long you can take it. These people aren't outside for minutes at a time. They're outside for hours at a time, days at a time. I'm no longer sad or depressed about this issue. I am angry. There's a chance that an individual I spoke to is now dead from hypothermia. There are cities that have installed spikes to keep displaced individuals from sleeping on sidewalks. There are others that have made it illegal to feed displaced individuals. Yeah, that's right. People have served a day in prison for giving a starving person a sandwich. These are not solutions to homelessness. These are precursors to genocide. This, in a country whose predominant religion is based upon the birth of a savior whose family was turned away from inns and grew up to preach humility, compassion, and loving your fellow man. During the December holiday season, this mall that I spoke of had donation tables for a food bank and charities and such. If this is how you treat displaced individuals, then I have some choice words for what I think of your quote unquote charity. Additionally, a few weeks ago, another displaced in individual asked me for some change. I typically don't carry cash, but I offered to buy him a meal at the food court. He insisted that mall security said he couldn't go into the mall because he had been begging for change outside of it. This confused me and got me a little irate as for all intents and purposes, he would have been a paying customer if he was sitting down to eat a meal that was paid for. Now, I do realize that the council's power to regulate private entities such as arenas, malls, and 24-hour establishments in this manner is slim to none. However, there are abandoned buildings that can be renovated. There are job and education programs that can be put into place. In this country, there is zero reason for people to be homeless and hungry. When mentioning about buying a meal for that person, an acquaintance at work tried telling me the, quote, buy a man a fish line, and said that I should have taught him how to, get to, how to get a job. How is someone supposed to get a job when they have no address, no phone, no place to shower, no place to wash their clothes, no references, no credentials, de deteriorating mental and physical health, and possible drug addictions? I have seen stories online that major cities such as, I believe, St. Paul, San Diego, and Philadelphia have, have hired displaced individuals for city beautification projects such as picking up trash, general maintenance parks, and the like. I think we should bring this type of idea to Albany. In closing, I'll repeat the ending of my comments from September when I previous, previously addressed this issue. What I do know is that we have a homeless population. What I do know 
is that this has become about corporate greed rather than human compassion. What I do know is that people are suffering and dying on our streets due to hunger, thirst, and exposure to nature's cruel elements. What I do know is if this is acceptable to me. What One I don't know remaining, Ms. Klein. if this is acceptable to you. Thank you for your time. Work out the NRA, Black Lives Matter. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Seeing there is no more individuals signed up this evening for public comment, we deem the public comment period at this time closed. Now moving on to our agenda, approval of minutes from previous meeting. Mr. Conti. Second. Mr. Klein. All, all in favor? Aye. Approval of minutes passed. Consideration, moving on to consideration of local law. Local law's head. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, noticed local law C, uh, and I ask for its passage and a roll call vote thereon. Can the clerk please read the local law? A local law amended in section 333-107 of article 12, alternative veterans exemption of chapter 333 taxation of the Albany City Code for the purpose of conforming city code provisions to the existing city practice with regard to limitations on the amount of assessed value that shall be exempt for the purposes of applying the alternative uh, veteran exem exemption. <clears throat> Any discussion on this local law? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anani. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mrs. Flaris? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Ballerin? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Conti? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Ms. O'Shea? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Ms. Farrell? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Hoey? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Izo? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Robinson? Yes. 15 affirmative. Local law passes. Moving on. Reports of standing committees. Is there any reports of standing committee? Uh, Ms. Fahey. Thank you. The um, Planning and Economic Development Committee will meet uh, this Wednesday, the 21st, uh, to discuss Resolution 13.23.18R and receive a, uh, we'll be discussing the role of the IDA and the CRC. And we will be meeting again on Tuesday the 27th, um, and we will, uh, representatives from the Sustainability Advisory Committee will be there to discuss the work that they do. And uh, also to discuss openings on both boards on both evenings. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Um, Ms. April. Thank you, Mr. President. The public safety, bless you. A public Safety Committee met on March 12th. Uh, had two purposes for that meeting. The first was to uh, meet with the consultant retained by the administration to conduct the search for our new police chief. And so the committee had the opportunity to ask the consultant questions about the organization, their process. Um, in addition, the consultant asked the committee questions about our personal perceptions, but also the perceptions of our residents as it relates to issues uh, pertaining to the police, the police chief, uh, public safety issues. And so we had a very fruitful conversation. If you were unable to attend, I do have contact information for the consultant. You are more than welcome to contact them and provide your input as they prepare their pro to implement their process. And then lastly, we heard from the public regarding um, concerns as it relates to uh, the recent uh, mass shootings in schools. And so we had um, some really good conversation, um, comments from our members of our community. Thank you. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, Finance, Taxation, and Assessment Committee met earlier today 
Uh, we are conducting interviews uh, for candidates of the, for the Board of Assessment Review. We have one vacancy. We will be continuing uh, those interviews uh, and hopefully concluding them uh, and making a decision tomorrow. Um, we also today took up consideration of Local Law C and that was passed out of committee with a positive uh, recommendation. And uh, we have two additional meetings in addition to tomorrow. We have a meeting on April 2nd and then again on April 10th to take up uh, bonds uh, that have been uh, requested by the Albany Police Department, the I Albany Fire Department, and the Department of Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Thank you. Reports on the ad hoc committee? No? Okay. Oh, Mr. Kimbrough? Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, the uh, Human Resources and Human Rights Committee met on Wednesday, March 14th, after caucus, to take up Resolution 103118R, which uh, related to the transfer of funds from contingency uh, in the Department of Administrative Services to fund the MWBE Fair Housing Coordinator position. And that was uh, voted out of the committee with uh, positive uh, results. Thank you. Moving on to consideration of ordinances. Mr. Kimbrough. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice ordinance 2332-18 and ask for its introduction. Could the clerk please read the ordinance. An ordinance accepting the conveyance of all right, title, and interest and the dedicating to the public use for street purposes certain lands con constituting a portion of lands known as Birch Hill Road in the city of Albany, New York. Mr. Conti. Thank you, um, Mr. President. I notice Ordinance 5.21.18 uh, with amendments, and uh, I ask for its passage and a roll call vote thereon. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing certain purchases by the City of Albany, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of $140,000 and authorizing the lease financing or the issuance of $140,000 serial bonds of said city to pay the cost thereof, golf course capital improvements. Is there any discussion on the ordinance? Yes. Mr. Hooley? Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President, and I um, echo the sentiments of uh, my colleague, uh, Tim Hoey. 
uh, that we should not send our city into more debt and burden our taxpayers with an issue that can be fixed by our city's workforce. Um, it is my recommendation that the ninth hole, uh, which is uh, under discussion, um, be closed until we can get our city workforce to prioritize the wall to be fixed. Although it may slightly impact, of course, revenues temporarily, and I must point out that you know we do break even with revenues, so it don't really it doesn't really benefit the city that much. Not bonding this project, not bonding this project will save our city and our taxpayers money well into the future. So, Mr. Nani. Thank you, Mr. P Thank you, Mr. President. My vote on this particular matter will not come as a surprise, as I have already expressed uh, my concerns with many of my colleagues in this chamber. Uh, many of my 10-4 constituents will be insulted to hear that I voted to spend, to borrow money to fix the ninth hole on our municipal golf course. There are sidewalks, there are streets, there are infrastructure repairs throughout my ward and also throughout the city that are in dire need of maintenance and also improvements. How money is allocated is a, city, is, a, is a statement about a city's priority. We have a budget deficit of $12.5 million, and we're trying to convince the governor that we need this recurrent payment to satisfy our recurrent need. This expenditure, which seems to be discretionary and non-essential, it sends the wrong message to my constituents, to the city, and most importantly, to our state government. Our priority should be focusing on essential needs, like fixing our neighborhoods, especially our more challenged neighborhoods that have been neglected for far too long. And with that, I'll be voting no, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Mr. Ballard. No, oh, Mr. Johnson, the council member would like. No, he, to you first, give you the opportunity. Thank you, President, Mr. President. I cannot support this um, bill for many reasons that were shared by my colleagues, but I just feel like we have to send the right messages out in every direction. So not to repeat um, things and make um, points redundant, but um, I just can't, can't support this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Ballard. Can you hear me? Okay. This is why I don't use the mic. It's a structural problem that we have. It's some, a property that we own, and we have a responsibility to maintain our property. We disagree on this one, and that's okay. We'll probably agree on others. Uh, but I will be voting in support of this because I see this as a maintaining of our property. We just had a good discussion about what happens when we don't maintain our properties. We had a property that we purchased maybe 30 years ago for $5 million, which we can't even sell for 650000 today because we didn't maintain it. We let it decay. We have to maintain this property. Even if we want to sell it or whatever you want to do for the future, it's our property, it's our responsibility to take care of, and I am voting for this because I think if we don't take care of it, it will cost us more money in the long run. And that's hurting taxpayers more than it's helping them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Mr. O'Brien. I'm in agreement with what Alfredo said. Um, and I do want to note, and it's been noted in the various discussions we had, that the golf course serves as a park. It serves as a nature park. It serves as a park for kids from all over the city for sleigh riding. It serves as a uh, dog walking park. I've used the nature trails there. And I don't know, maybe there was a bit of bad planning. That could be true. But they are under a time frame to get it up and running. Because the season normally begins around April 15th. So you can't operate a golf course and make to and expect to have it be marketable with one of the uh, holes missing, with one of the nine holes missing. 
So I'm going to vote in favor of this. If there are some lessons to be learned about planning, so, so be it. But I'm not going to hold uh, this uh, park at, you know, at, at bay because of perhaps some things, some better planning that should have been done. Thank you. Mr. Igo. Mr. President, me fellow members, uh, I've spoken on this before, and uh, I have supported every park project in this city, whether it be Arbor Hill Baseball Park a couple years ago. I stood up and I said, all right, let's get the lights here, okay? Let's get the lights. If you can't get them this year, rent lights to put up there. I've supported the steps going down to Lincoln Park, okay? Every, every field that I've played on, uh, basketball carts over on North Manning Boulevard, uh, Swinburne Park when they couldn't freeze ice anymore. These don't produce anything, but they're for the good of the kids, okay? This, as Mr. O'Brien said, is a park also. And on top of that, it's a money maker, okay? And some of this money that we get from there is being used for some of the projects that I just talked about. It, you're just being short-sighted, and Alfredo said maintenance is everything. Look at City Hall. We said tonight, Alfredo and I were sitting looking in the windows. I, I mentioned before, the neglect to this building is costing us big time. Anytime you neglect any capital improvements, it's coming back to bite you in the butt, okay? And it might not be next year or the year after, but citizens are going to pay for it down the line. Just keep that all in mind. Thank you. Ms. Farrell? So it's. Here you want. <laughs> I might start singing. I don't even know. Um, I just wanted to note, and you can pull that out. Then I can really start singing. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to note that I I do definitely appreciate the dialogue with us. I think dialogue dialogue is an important thing. However, this is a absolute public safety issue. There are children that are the sledding hill. It's right by the sledding hill, and you have to factor that in. This is not a year-round golf course. We don't live in that kind of climate. For a large part of the year, in fact, the majority of the year, it's a park that people use regularly. People, kids sled there, people walk there, people hike there, people ski there, they walk their dogs there. You can't have a wall that is crumbling down where kids sled. It's just not okay. So I understand people's issues with it, but there are times that you need to put the people in our city first and the safety of them using these places first. And I think this is the case across the city. Um, I would fully support this kind of infrastructure improvement anywhere, or repair, really. Thank you. Ms. Fahey. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I wanted to say a couple of things. Um, I... Uh, uh, Councilmember Howie brought up the concern that why aren't we doing it in-house? Um, but I would ask, and I have made this mistake myself uh, um, before, I would ask you, when you have those types of concerns about why isn't this work being done, uh, please reach out to uh, the Commissioner of General Services and have those conversations with people in the departments. Uh, find out why it is or why it is not that work can or cannot be done. Um, and I think that uh, educating yourself on, these, on some of these issues by taking that extra step, talking to the people in departments, is, um, is an important thing to do when you're making these kinds of decisions. And, uh, and, it, and, those, and reaching out like that is always welcomed by the departments as well because uh, the decisions that they make, there are many reasons they make the decisions that they do. Um, and, it, and I think you would find, uh, find that extremely helpful. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, I wanted to, to mention just how important, again, and others have said this, to, how important it is to maintain our facilities. I am reminded of our, uh, we had this fabulous, uh, this is a, quite a while ago now, previous administration, we had a this fabulous public bath down in the south end. I mean, truly a, a historic property. And there were uh, many who still used it as a, a place to go and take a swim. And um, 
Over the years, though, this facility was not maintained and gradually, gradually uh, came into um, disrepair. And it, it's a, to me, it's an example of what happens when you don't keep up one of these facilities. And, and now there it is over on, uh, I think it's 4th Avenue, uh, all boarded up. And it's the saddest thing because it really could be a great resource in that neighborhood. I see this as something similar. We have, uh, we have this uh, resource, this golf course, it's revenue producing. Many, many people in the city take advantage of it for uh, many different uh, recreation activities. I'm also concerned with the liability that we talked about. Uh, Council Member, Member Farrell, she had that photograph. It showed you the kids in the background. Um, it's important that something like that uh, be repaired. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Conti?
Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Thank you, Mr. President. I will be in favor of this um, resolution. I just want to note for the record, I'm, I'm appalled that we have council members voting against this who actually work every day with children and in the parks. And, and I find that appalling, that they are here representing the kids. Every day they go to work, and that's like me saying, you know what, I'm going to vote against your playground. It's a structure. This is very, this is needy. So my point is I can't believe they're going to vote against this when they go to school, work every day and they deal with children, and they're going to vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Um, Ms. Duche, and once Ms. Duche speaks, no, not allow anybody else to speak because she is the carrier of the bill. So, Ms. Duche. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Um, everybody here knows I'm in favor of fiscal prudence, especially when it comes to our our uh, bonding, and I've been uh, watching very carefully and uh, you know how we are dealing with our expenditures. I understand the desire to see this particular improvement cost us less. It will be go out to bid. It will be uh, the lowest bidder, uh, responsible bidder will uh, win it, and hopefully it will come in under the amount that is authorized by this bond, and I fully expect that it will. I do want to highlight what Mr. Conti was saying and other people were saying about the fact that we have been approving, and I think that you know, for some of the newer members, this is in, very important to understand, we have been approving substantial amounts of bonding uh, to improve basketball courts, tennis courts, and parks throughout the city. Uh, and, um, uh, and we do have some additional bonding uh, this year that is intended to complete the last projects. There are some projects that have been authorized in the past in terms of uh, some of our parks uh, that the work is not being done until um, this year. So you haven't even seen all of the benefits of everything that we have authorized. Uh, but uh, this is not about picking one part of the city over another. Everything has been being looked at across the city for many years. Um, and I, I would hate to think that we're going to say we're not going to invest in our parks and our playgrounds and facilities such as a skateboarding park that really not that many people use, but for the uh, individuals who do use it, they consider it a very important, vital part. And, and the parents and, and other people who know skateboarders know that it's important to have that kind of facility in the city and that kind of investment uh, has been made uh, and I would hate for us to say essentially every pothole, as much as we'd like to see it, every pothole and every uh, crumbling sidewalk is going to be addressed in the city before uh, we invest in, uh, in our parks. I think that we need to be looking at lifting up the city uh, throughout and, and I think that that is what we have been doing, um, certainly during my time uh, on the council. I do also want to address the whole concept that, that I haven't, and I apologize that I haven't gotten involved in this part of the discussion in our caucuses, about the idea that the golf course has, uh, is money making and therefore they should spend their own money on this. The, the reality is, uh, and, and some of you have not been through the whole budget process. Unless it is allocated through the budget, they don't, have, they don't sit on a slush fund. The income that comes into the city, they, the different departments don't sit on the money that they bring in. It all goes into the budget. And then it is allocated out of that budget. And we went through that process in the fall. And that money has been allocated. The, the, uh, you know, the amount of money, you, you know, there, there's not a dedicated fund that is specifically for the golf course that you can then take the money out of that particular fund. We can set things up that way if people want to do that, uh, but that is not the way we exist currently. So um, suggesting that the golf course, the DGS should just take money out of the golf course itself is not something that they are legally permitted to do. That's not the way we're currently um, set up. 
and I think that we'll continue to have some of that kind of dialogue. With regard to the whole issue of, I mean, I think some of this is getting at the, you know, the whole issue as to whether or not the golf course is a worthwhile investment at all. And I think that that is a separate discussion that we need to take up, not while we allow a hazardous situation to exist out at the golf course in the meantime. Before, when, when you are considering putting property on the market, when you're considering doing anything, you need to be maintaining your property uh, so that it brings the best price. In terms of the idea of not, I mean, th this project as it is, according to the RFP, is not gonna be completed until uh, mid to late June. Uh, and that's bad enough with respect to the potential for it turning golfers off to coming to our golf course. So it's not like all, all of a sudden we look at things and we get to reconfigure things and we get to, I wanna say, uh, you know, specifically direct, and I, and, and, I, and I do caution myself against this, micromanaging the departments and how they do their work. It's one thing to take the broader overview and provide guidance moving forward, but to say in this year, no, you're, what you have decided to do this year is not acceptable uh, and you need to change things. Part of, the, part of what bonding is supposed to be doing is rather than putting things in the, in the budget and putting personnel in the budget that is needed for a one-time event or a, a specific project with specific skills, you look to hire the right amount of staff for your everyday uh, responsibilities and that is what DGS has done and continues to do when they try to uh, do it within their within their uh, budget and recognizing the physical restraints that we're under. Uh, for them to hire people, put people on staff so that they can take care of some major project here and some major project there that doesn't then leaves those workers potentially idle the rest of the time or doesn't isn't putting their skills to the best use uh, the rest of the time uh, is one of the factors that they need to be looking at as they're deciding whether or not is this something that we contract out for is, or is this something that we take care of in-house? Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Commissioner Mirabli um, and, um, and his judgment um, on things like this and also Mr. Uh, Milano and the number of projects that we bond with regard to building improvements. We could argue that a lot of that could be done in-house. The reality is we contract out for um, a lot of our roads, but we also do do some of that in-house. Um, and so uh, it's a balance and, and you know, figuring that out and providing guidance moving forward as we look at these issues, I think can be helpful and to have that dialogue, uh, as Ms. Fahey said, to have that kind of dialogue with uh, the commissioners in terms of, of how do we best uh, use our limited resource financially and with regard to um, personnel. Um, and uh, so I am voting in favor of this because I do uh, think that this improvement is needed, that it creates a liability issue if we uh, leave it out there uh, unaddressed uh, for uh, an extended period of time. And I trust the judgment of uh, Commissioner Mirabli in saying that this is uh, a le the level of a project that we really need to contract out for rather than relying on staff in-house to uh, take care of. I do urge people to uh, reconsider their uh, positions on this and I do hope that this will pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duche. Mr. Duche, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anani. No. Ms. Plaris. Yes. Mr. Ballerin. Mr. Conti? Yes. Mr. O'Shea? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? No. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? No. Is 10 affirmative, 5 negative? Ordinance passes.
Moving on to consideration of resolutions. May I just, uh, I just, excuse me, I just want to verify that item two, uh, ordinance 10.21.18 has been withdrawn. Yes, thank you, Mr. Conti stated that earlier. Moving on to consideration of resolutions. Resolutions introduced, Ms. Fahey. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 132318R and ask for its introduction. And the clerk, please read the resolution. Resolution of the Common Council consenting to the amendment of the City of Albany, Cap City of Albany Capital Resource Corporation Certificate of Incorporating of Corporation, pardon me, authorizing the continuation of the authority of the City of Albany Capital Resource Corporation to issue obligations to finance projects to be undertaken by the corporation and to make such authority permanent. Mr. Conti. <coughs> Mr. Kimbrough. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 103118 as amended and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council consenting to the transfer of funds which will affect the salary total in the Department of Administrative Services for the 2018 budget. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anani? Yes. Mr. Clarence? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Mr. Conti? No. Mr. O'Shea? No. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. 14 affirmative, one negative. Resolution passes. Moving on, any miscellaneous or unfinished business? Mr. Kimbrough? Thank you, Mr. President. I offer a list of names for appointee to uh, Commissioner Deeds and waive the reading of their names. Clerk, please read the resolution. Resolved that the following persons be and are hereby appointed Commission of Deeds for the City of Albany, New York for the term ending December 31st, 2018. Miscellaneous. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, Mr. Second. Meeting adjourned.